It looks like you're ready. I'm ready. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Egg Harbor Library, and today we're doing a virtual recipe swap, getting ready for the holidays. And I have Jess here, our building manager, and she'll be uh, doing some talking. And we have some um, visitors, too. We have Janice from the Savory Spoon and Mary Jo from the Savory Spoon. And we'll be uh, talking a little bit about the Savory Spoon because I spent a couple of summers there and I'd love to share about it and my experiences. So um, getting started, what we're gonna do is just um, talk a little bit about favorite recipes or favorite cookbooks. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what our library has to offer in cookbooks and um, show you a little bit of what we have. And um, so let's get started. So Jess, do you wanna start by sharing a recipe with us? Um, sure, okay. So I actually have this recipe. I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and screen share it here. But this recipe is actually, um, I think my mom, my mom's a flight attendant. Uh, well, she's retired now. She just actually retired this spring. Thank you, COVID. But it was, you know, she was about ready to retire. So we weren't too sad about it. It was just sad that she didn't do, do it on her own terms. Anyway, so this recipe she actually got um, from one of her coworkers. And it's a cold sesame noodle salad. So I just want to show you. I had her send me a photo of it. So I just want to show you a photo of the actual recipe. Because, like, I mean, we often find that some of the best recipes are, you know, can you see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> so you can see, like, all the edits that have been made and then soy sauce has been spilled on it. Um, but basically, what this is, and this was great during COVID, I'm going to just share some of my favorite COVID recipes. So, um, it, it is just a ses cold sesame noodle salad. And the good thing about it is that it gets better the longer you, you know, hang on to it. So um, basically what you do is, um, you know, you cook and you make a big batch of it too. So you just basically cook pasta and then you mix the dressing. There are a couple of changes that I made to this where um, I actually use instead of sugar. So it calls for soy sauce, sesame oil, red wine vinegar, um, half cup sugar, fresh garlic, chili sauce, and fresh ginger. Um, and then, you know, obviously top it with chopped green onions, minced peanuts, and sliced red bell pepper. So, and I love how cute that the, the woman who gave it to my mom was like, it's very hard to do. Please listen carefully. Boil the pasta, drain well, add other stuff, mix, and then put it, pour it over the pasta. So it's super, super simple. And, um, and you can add chicken um, to make it more of a meal. I guess this looks like it's from 2002, 518-2002. Um, but what I've done too is like sometimes the carbs, like I'm not low carb by any means, but like sometimes eating a lot of pasta just really weighs me down. So I found this really great um, bonza pasta salad that's actually made from chickpeas that I recently uh, substituted. So. That's kind of a fun, easy one. Um, my friend had a baby in April and we did a meal train and I wanted them to just have a lot of food that they didn't have to really mess around with. So I made them a big batch of this. So, yeah. Yeah, so that, that looks that looks like a good one. I like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's simple. And some of these recipes that I share, I'll, I make my own modifications, but you can tell it's a well-loved recipe. Yeah. Well, I have... Well, um, Several yeah, Janice. Different. Oh, Janice. You, you paused a little bit when you spoke about the sugar and a half a cup sounds like a lot of sugar. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I just did, I ended up just doing a quarter cup of sugar um, because that was a lot of sugar for me. Um, and then I actually just used, um, I used unrefined sugar too. Um, which takes a little bit longer to dissolve. You probably know that. But yeah, it was too sweet when I made it the first time. Way too sweet. So um, I would cut down the sugar on it for sure. Okay. Well, um, I have lots of favorite recipes and um, I decided to uh, take all of my favorite recipes and put them in a book. So uh, the book is a digital book and I just made a quick copy of it. 
and I've done this a couple of times. This is um, this book. This little cookbook is my. It's like you should have a few recipes that you can always have for company or for holidays, and so that's what this is. And then one time um, when I was teaching, I did an online soup cookbook, and we would have soup um, during um, tech. I was the tech trainer. So mm -hmm. I would bring a big pot of soup to make people come. And so then I would share out the recipe in a, um, an ebook form that I had made. There's a couple of websites out there where you can put in your, um, your recipe card, just take a, a, a snapshot of it and have everything digitized. So this one that I put together, um, I was uh, living in Germany and I was trying to consolidate everything. And so I, I went through all of my recipes and, and came up with my favorites. And so um, I have a, a couple of favorites that I make sure I do during the holidays. And um, this one, and it's in a couple of places, is called the Franco Mint and um, Cheesecake. Now, Franco Mint, anyone, just do you know what a Franco Mint is? No, I don't. Okay. So um, anyone else know what a Frango Mint is? So if you're from Chicago, you know about Marshall Fields. And Marshall Fields um, sells Frango Mints. And so this is a Marshall Fields cookbook. And um, they have a little cafe uh, in, um, in the basement of, um, of the store in, in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. But in Chicago was their flagship store and they had the walnut room. And every Christmas you would go there and, the, and they would have this huge Christmas tree. And um, the chicken pot pie was what everyone would get. Mary Jo, you know about Marshall Fields. Shake your head. <laughs> You're muted, she knows. So in this book is the... Um, the Frango chocolate um, cheesecake and um, the recipes in here too. But this recipe is the same, but I have to tell you how I got this recipe. So back maybe 30 years ago, you would taste something and you would be, wow, is that so good? And there was no internet to like say, it would have Frango mint, cream cheese. You couldn't do that but you could write to this column in the Milwaukee Journal and they would then put it out in the newspaper, uh, such and such is looking for this cheesecake that is so good and it's got frango mints. And so then um, like a week later, then they, they find it and they put it in the newspaper. So this is my frango mint and it's this, then it came out in the cookbook. I said, I went through all that work to get this recipe, but it's the same one. And it's a delicious um, minty cheesecake and um, reminds me of Chicago and uh, uh, reminds me of Christmas. It would be something you'd make for uh, a special occasion. So I'll so put wait, that up. Mean the, frang yeah. the frango mint, so that's not like a type of mint, that's, a de the, that's the cheesecake dessert? <laughs> Yeah, let me show you what a frango mint looks like. Ah. Oh, they're so good. Now, mm. Macy still sells frango mints at Christmas time. So there's still Macy's around, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know what's around anymore, but um, frango mints. Um, and I seem to get a box at Christmas from somebody. Mary Jo, do you ever get boxes as gifts from people? Do you, maybe Mary Jo would get them too because she's from Chicago. But um, they're just little chocolate mints and uh, they're just so good. I'll make sure to get some for us here at the Crest to try them out, but, but they're delicious. And uh, this cheesecake is really good. And I'll post that recipe um, for you all to see. Uh, Jess, when we're done with this, um, on, the, on the Crest Facebook page, can we put the recipes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that'll be easier for people to see because it's pretty hard to just see from um, the books. So um, I um, took a part-time job during Christmases at Marshall Fields. 
So um, always when I buy a, a cookbook, there's got to be a reason. And um, I would, uh, I went through their whole menu in the basement uh, for, I don't think I made any money at Marshall Fields. I spent it all as fast as I could make it. But um, this just kind of is a, a memory uh, of uh, my time there. So um, that's the Marshall Fields cookbook. And I know a, a lot of people from Chicago have this cookbook um, as memories from Marshall Fields. So it's fun, fun cookbook. So um, I have another cookbook um, and a cookbook story. And this one is um, called yeah. the White House Chef. And this um, chef, this head chef, uh, was during the Bush administration and the Clinton administration. And um, back when I lived in Milwaukee, I was, uh, Janice, I was a volunteer assistant. <laughs> For him. And we would get authors in. <laughs> and this author um, was uh, the White House. This was his book. And then um, we would prep these meals prep and so this was back 2007 and he would give us um the meals and then usually at the end he gave us a cookbook you know different uh yeah. authors would give us a cookbook and he made it a fantastic enchiladas Ooh. i know oh it was a great enchilada and i i talked to him about um i knew about him before he came because I said, I have been using your enchilada recipe and it was Bill Clinton's favorite uh, food that this um, author, and he put Janine from one enchilada lover to another, enjoy these stories and recipes. And yeah. so, um, so from my time in Milwaukee being an assistant, um, I have um, a few uh, fun uh, cookbooks and um, you know- just is, it a, is it a chicken stuff. enchilada or is it a beef enchilada? Um, it was uh, a chicken enchilada. Okay, even better. Yeah. I don't think Bill Clinton's eating it anymore because he's a vegan, but back in the day he wasn't. So. Well, maybe he makes a vegan kind. <laughs> so do you have a favorite cookbook, Jess? Um, I didn't bring it actually, but uh, let me pull up a photo of it. So it is... Uh, let me pull it up. Well, actually, let me just share this one right now, and then I'll I'll, I'll pull out my other one when I'm ready. Um, but this is so I love anything from Alice Waters. Um, this is actually one that I discovered that the library had that I've come to like because again, over COVID and um, quarantine, um, made a lot of fresh pasta and actually got the you know the pasta installation piece and put it um, put it on my mixer. And so I really liked it. I think this is one of her earlier cookbooks, uh -huh. um, pizza and pasta and calzone. Um, so this one I really liked. I actually renewed it a bunch of times and um, used a number of her recipes in here for pasta. Um, I do have another one of her catalogs. And I just, what I like about Chez Panisse is it's just very simple food. You know, it's yeah. just really simple, good ingredients. Um, and I love her philosophy. So I didn't meet her. I've been to Chez Panisse, but I didn't meet her and I don't oh. have her autograph, but um, this one's available there, available here. So in my little um, recipe book that I have that I made, um, at Easter, the Italians make um, calzone or Easter pie. And so everyone has like perfected their calzone recipe. Ooh. And um, so my calzone recipe is in here and I, always make it at um, Easter. And um, and then you just serve it cold um, during the day or for breakfast. And it's just, my kids all really like it. Um, when I was, uh, years ago, I um, loved cooking and I got together with a, a group of friends and we said once a month, we each had to come up with a new recipe and then share it with the group. And so um, some, you know, you would be assigned the main meal, a salad, a drink. And so um, for about 10 years, we did that. And then we would um, make little cookbooks to give to our friends at Christmas. And so um, this is my friends. And um, we did this from one of our cookbooks that we made. 
I gave to our friends. But um, that was always um, a fun thing to do. It forced you to make a new recipe each month because we get kind of set in our ways and we don't want to, uh, um, you know, just do the same thing. It's easy. So, uh, but you know, what I yeah. found that I really like. Um, have you ever listened to Milk Street? Yes. On yes. WPR, I love Milk Street. I discovered it during um, during COVID, and I love Christopher Kimball. And I feel like I got a lot of inspiration out of that show. In fact, I even like joined the like membership, and they they produce a um, like magazine, a quarterly or every, uh, every other magazine, every other month magazine. Um, and I found a lot of inspiration there. Oh, that's cool. I always see those ads and I, I, I yeah, that would be. What were you gonna something. say, Janice? I was gonna say, so remember he has the Cooks Illustrated. Mm -hmm. And I think I, what I've heard is that he remarried a younger person. And I think that what happened is that person may have said, we need to update this. And now it's a little bit more like Savour, which is they take you to unusual places as where Cooks Illustrated, you know, clearly said, you know, this is how you do onions and this is how, you know, like that. And now he's going worldly, so to speak, um, which I think now that everybody's cooking more, you, you can't just still be doing this is how you caramelize onions. I mean, I think I think we can, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think it's interesting because um, I didn't realize that that Cooks Illustrated was him too, because yeah. his new yeah. publication, the Milk Street publication, I really liked it because I thought it was really similar to Cooks Illustrated where it's like, yeah, oh, we have a, uh, we, yep, we have a copy of it here. So yes, we at the library and most libraries have a subscription to Cooks Illustrated. And I have a couple of their cookbooks and we have their cookbooks here in the library. The cookbooks are behind me. We have quite a few, but Cooks Illustrated is, um, is one of our magazines. Let me just share out what our other magazines are. Yeah. And uh, so Cooks Illustrated uh, is one and you can check these out for a month. Taste of Home, and I always I always poo poo Taste of Home, but I've, I've come up they've come up with some fun recipes. I mean, I it, it's like uh, comfort food, um, yeah. but uh, Taste of Home, and they're located in Milwaukee. Their test kitchen. Has anyone been to their test kitchen? The the yes. one several of their uh, test people have come here before to kind of check oh, out. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, they. I think it's in Green, Greenfield or Green Dale. No, Green something. But it's in Milwaukee, and it's a fun day trip uh, to go to their test kitchen, and uh, so it's a fun place to go. But so we get Taste of Home, and Real Simple usually has some recipes, and uh, Martha Stewart's Living. I just like looking at the pictures. <laughs> And uh, Better Homes and Gardens, which has been around forever, always has some really nice recipes too. So these are ours. And depending on which library you go to, Sister Bay probably has some different ones. I don't know, Janice, have you checked out their um, magazines? I, uh, I haven't. Um, but kind of going back to Cook's Illustrated, I yeah. think um, that you can highly, highly recommend the Cook's Illustrated, their regular cookbook, and their baking cookbook. To me, those two cookbooks are the, um, what was the red checkered one? Oh, I think those two are the Betty Crocker of today. Yeah. Those two. Okay. I have the soups and stews of um, Cooks Illustrated, which I use quite a bit. That's a nice one too. Yeah. Um, I want to share that cookbook really quick that I, if you don't mind, that I was no, just- No, go right ahead. So I really love, um, I guess kind of my overall theme lately is just something that's like very like basic ingredients. I really like. Oh, Nemo. yes. Nothing yes, we fancy. have that. We do. And then I think yeah. we, have, we have her other one, too. And I yes. just um, I really like the New York Times food 
interface. Like you can download the app and like save the recipes and things. And so I really love her approach to entertaining. Um, it's just like, you know, very easy and fun. And everything that I've made out of there. In fact, the celery fennel with walnuts and blue cheese recipe was really great. But these are like, she talks to you like a real person. I mean, it doesn't, it, it's very like, I guess it's it's appealing to people who probably cook a lot and then people who don't really. Um, she's just very real in it. I And so I really liked it. So yeah. I, um, we have a book sale area uh, in our library. And one thing people like to get rid of is cookbooks. And I mean, I, I usually take them home and then bring them back and put them in the sale area. But um, one of my favorite authors or cookbook authors is uh, Jamie Oliver. Yes. He's, he's what got me inspired about making pizzas. Uh, I use his, um, a lot of his pizza, uh, well, his pizza dough recipe for my uh, wood fire uh, pizza oven. But I love this one, the five ingredients, because he has the five ingredients and then it was, it, it was just, you know, it goes through fish and chicken and pork and uh, very simple, nice. One dollar at our book sale area is this nice cookbook. So, so have you met we him, have Janine? lots of great cookbooks. One dollar. So Did you meet him? At our book sale area. Oh, get it? Hello. Hello. Can I get it? Who's saying, who's saying this? Can you hear me? Yeah, who's that? Who's talking? Mary, Mary Joe wants it. it. Mary, you want this, Mary Joe? Okay, I'll put, I'll put your I'll name on it. For a dollar. So. It's a dollar. Okay, <laughs> bye. Mary Joe's. <laughs> I'll just show you a few more that we have in the, I always go when I get the donations. Okay, I, well, um, so when I get the donations, I, I go, Jess, oh gosh, cookbook donations. <laughs> this one was plenty, and it's um, vibrant vegetable recipes from London's Atolengi. Atolengi, it's a- Oh, look okay. at Every book that every book, this book is so wonderful for vegetables. So, but if a person doesn't like vegetables, they shouldn't get these cookbooks. Yeah. So, and this is a dollar in our book sale area. I mean, it's a gorgeous book. So, um, I'll just show you a handful of the, the, I took them home and looked at them for a week and now I'm bringing them back. So this is one pan, two plates, more than 70 complete weekend meals for two. And that's it. that was a nice one. And it's about the pictures. I'm all about the pictures, you know, yeah. in a cookbook. And finally, I mean, there's a lot more on, the, on our book sale shelf, but America's text. And this one is the complete cookie. And um, so, it's just great, great deals in our book sale area because people are always giving away their cookbooks. They get, yeah. you know, they get them as gifts. They're done with them after a couple of years. And so we get them at the library uh, for our sale. So, um, yeah, so that's just a few. So Mary Jo, you'll have to come for a visit. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I just want to introduce Mary Jo. Mary Jo, wave to everyone. Mary Jo um, assists at the Savory Spoon. Janice runs the Savory Spoon. And I'm going to share my screen because she sent me some um, recipes that she wanted to share with the group. So I'm going to share my screen. And then Mary Jo, if you want to um, say, uh, say a little bit. Can you, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, to... Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So Mary Jo, um, you want to Alrighty. talk to us about your autumn butternut casserole? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this has kind of a funny story because one time I spent the Thanksgiving weekend with vegetarian friends and I was rather distraught because, you know, vegetarian Thanksgiving sounded kind of boring. 
but uh, this was the recipe that I brought and uh, they loved it so much that this is their mainstay recipe every year since, and that was years ago. And it comes out of a funny little book that was actually a Benson and Hez Hedge Benson and Hedges cigarettes. And um, oh. <laughs> I've had this book for probably 40 years. I never smoked, somebody gave it to me. And it's recipes from great American inns. And it's still, you can see it's pretty worn and it's still one of my little tiny go to books. You know, it's um, still on my shelf and there's still a lot of recipes in here that I use. So, yeah, I know you sent great some, side dish, um, but if you some do cool have pictures. vegetarian friends, which we all do more. Yeah. So, so Mary Jo, Mary um, jo what, what is the, what's a Jonathan apple? I saw a Jonathan uh, apple. You could use any kind of apple. Okay. Uh, I would, any type. Yeah, there is a Jonathan apple, uh, but you could use anything like a, um, a Macintosh or any of the varieties. Okay. Macintosh is my favorite simply because we had a big old toss tree in our backyard a long time ago. All right. And it looks like you do a lot of clipping because I, so, I the next picture yeah. you sent me. It is, what, if you get invited. <laughs> Go ahead. So it looks like you have some um, different ways to entertain. I like this idea of using the squash and the cabbage uh, for a fall uh, meal. So do you do a lot of clippings? I am a clip-aholic. I'll admit <laughs> it. I have 40 years worth of... <laughs> recipes that I have clipped. Fortunately, now you don't have to sit in the doctor's office and try to rip them out with nobody seeing you. With no one looking. <laughs> because you can snap the picture with your handy. <laughs> but uh, I do uh, have uh, about five or six of these books and they are my go-to books. They're fun. I try to keep my uh, recipes organized. Um, I'm going to guess that these pictures are from Southern Living because that is another great recipe source. And I used oh, yeah. to actually get their annuals until I just had too many. But uh, Southern Living always had a lot of great ideas. So that's probably where I clip these from. So if I see something that's simple for entertaining because I like presentation, uh, I will clip that into my recipe books. Um, that I have like here's some more ideas that I um so yeah and uh charcuterie you know cheese is um really popular right now so I thought oh this would be an elegant and simple way to set your table with your appetizer your cheese you know and uh crackers and such and I've actually done both of these arrangements oh nice well and I think I'll just I right. mean I I like the clipping too, Mary Jo, because it's like there's just something about have like versus like Pinterest, like having like a, you know, the tactile paper of like a cookbook. And I don't know, I just feel like it's nice to just have it there in front of you versus on a screen, you know. I like the pictures. I still, these are still my, I think I have five or six of these. These are my go to books. Um, every once in a while I go through and yank some out that, you know, um, I know I'm never going to make or, you know, or if I make one and I don't like it, I yank it out. But, uh, yeah, they are, um, I've been doing it forever. It's just a little insane habit. And we were talking about favorite cookbooks. I had, um, a great career, which, uh, my company sent me all over the country. So as a result, um, I did get to eat at a lot of fabulous restaurants. So um, I also collect cookbooks. I would collect them from wherever I was. And um, I still have a lot of them, but a lot of them were the old, the, the spiral bound type, you know, with the little plastic spiral bound. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I liked the most fell apart. And I was afraid that if I just clipped those recipes out of the book, 
then I would never find them again. So I also made a scrapbook where I actually organized them by the cookbook. So I saved the cookbook cover. And now, you know, here's one that came from Keystone, uh, Colorado. I think I just kind of borrowed that off of the um, condo we were staying at, came home with me. But, <laughs> but uh, so I've, um, I've clipped them and I had about five or six of my favorites that now went into binders as well because the books were literally falling apart. So that is my clip book obsession. <laughs> well, and I, it's a great idea because you have you, you know you can my, hang on to these magazines forever, you know, yeah. and just stacks of magazines. Right. So it's good to clip it out. So I'm just gonna yeah, and I um, still have a through. box, so I try to whip it up. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to show you right now. Uh, Jane uh, so wanted to be here and she couldn't, oh. and she wanted us to. I don't know how long this is. But she made this little video. She used to teach cooking classes to children. And I know Mary Jo assisted. Did you assist her? Or that no, was the other way. I think Maureen I assisted. Oh, Jane no, helped you. Jane was your assist. So I have just a, a little clip. We'll watch a little bit of it. We'll get a feel for uh, the savory spoon, uh, which um, is, we all love it. It's, it's, it's our comfort place, the savory spoon. Janice, you've done such a great <laughs> job there. And we're Thank looking you. forward to seeing it in again next year. Yes. But yeah. So we'll show we'll see this little uh, clip that Jane uh, sent us. Oops, maybe not. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. These are recipes that kids made. Yeah. Wow. She, she taught the kids classes. Oh, wow. Oh, Janice, I can't wait till we can come back and go to classes again. Me too. Oh, I really missed it this summer. It was like our annual tradition of going. I think I did two last year. Oh, wow. We went to the farm first. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. That looks good. <laughs> That's great. Very cute. Um, so here's just some pictures uh, that uh, Jane sent with her favorite uh, recipe. Sound of all roasted butternut squash and onions. Uh, not the same as Mary Jo's, but um, us butter sc nut sc squash, it's that time of year, soups and, um, and then Janice sent this fresh cranberry chutney, which uh, I remember it <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> and Which when you toss in the, the Grand Marnier, it's really good. <laughs> yes, yes. So oh, that's, Janice, uh, that's question, an, um, a nice one to have at Thanksgiving. Thanks question, for sharing that with us. That's yeah. a good one. Um, Janice, question on this one. So like I have these cranberries that are frozen, that are like they were fresh frozen or whatever. Could I use those or does it have to be fresh? It needs, it needs to be fresh okay. and then once you make this then you can freeze it which is fabulous because the sugar kind of preserves it and it continues to have that crunch so let's say you were going to have turkey sandwiches you know like the second week of december you just take that out and thaw it and put it on your on your sandwich mm. yeah. and i okay. freeze it in I freeze it in one half cups so that you can just pull out a little with pork. It's great with all kinds of things. Okay. Wow, that sounds yummy. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to have cranberries. I mean, cranberries is traditional, but you know, you don't want to have the, you want something a little different. Well, and, and children, children love this. I usually make one without the Grand Marnier. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, and children love this because it's, you know, it's like a, what do you call a starburst or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to um, stop yeah. sharing for a second here, yeah. get back to me. And um, Mary Jo was talking about traveling around and, and collecting people. And I did that for a while too. And I have to show you um, this book, uh, it's called mm -hmm. a Mount Montana Table. Uh, you would go oh, years ago, we did this for about five years. We would go to this Tico Hot Springs Resort. And Tico's Hot Springs in Montana um, is just near Yellowstone. And it's Hot Springs. And then they have this four-star restaurant there. And this is their book. And we would stay there. And then we would go to Yellowstone. So what I like to do in my cookbooks is is tie it together with, with yeah. what happened, why I have this cookbook. And so not only is it a cookbook, but it's a, a memory book too of our time in Yellowstone. So, um, and I, I'd love to go back. <laughs> I love, this is a fun place to go, Chico Hot Springs. It, it was always a fun place for us. So um, yeah, that's something I like to do to cookbooks. Mary, I mean, um... Janine, I love, love, love that idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I always encourage people to write in their recipe books. You know, yeah. Aunt, Aunt Betty came for dinner tonight and she, you know, had a terrible hair day or what, whatever. Or, you know, next time I'll put less sugar. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Notes. Very nice. Very nice. So um, I just wanna show you a couple more things before we um, finish up here. Uh, and right here, our um, cookbook section. And I have to show you this one. Janice, remember this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> this one is a great cookbook. It's the Lake Michigan Cottage Cookbook. And Janice's Savory Spoon is featured in this book. So um, this is a fun cookbook that you might wanna check out. I know. Um, we we loved it at the Savory Spoon and and um, and she came to visit and talk yeah. about her her cookbook. So this is a great uh, cookbook. Um, we also have um, lots of cookbooks. Uh, I can tell you the ones that go out the most. This one goes out all the time, and um, it's about um, baking, and it's uh, healthy bread in five minutes a day. It's, it's we have a couple of these. Um, by the same couple, uh, and uh, so we have a couple of books by them. They get requested a lot. What? This is the one that goes out the most. Mm. <laughs> so that's the same um, group. Uh, another one that goes out a lot is Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, which is a PPS series, right? Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very, very hot. So this goes out a lot. Oh, Janine can't hear you right now. What's that? I couldn't hear you that. Oh, so these are just the newest uh, cookbooks that we got. This one is the Little Women Cookbook uh, and it's tempting recipes from the March sisters. We got, we have the Great Minnesota Cookie Book. Ooh. This is supposed to be really good. And uh, Linda, who is a volunteer in the library, uh, has this cookbook and she absolutely loves it. She loves to make. And she makes great cookies. I know. And so, I mean, we have lots of interesting on what to eat, drink cancer treatment. So lots of interesting cookbooks and a cocktail codex book. So um, lots of fun uh, books in the library. This whole section behind me is all cookbooks. So the library's fun to come uh, for uh, cookbooks. We have about five more minutes. Does anyone want to uh, ask any questions or add anything uh, to the uh, discussion? Well, I you? will add one comment. Okay, Go ahead. Janice. Me? Yeah. Did you have okay. something to say? Yeah. Well, um, I've never worked at a library, but you know how people have uh, book clubs. Yes. And and chat places. Yeah. So you're saying that 
three of those recipe books were books that are really hot right now. You know, yeah. they, yeah. and how could, even with COVID, how could someone put something in the book that um, here are the two things, this is what I loved, or to get communication oh, yeah. if, if they wanted it. Yeah, that could be a fun thing to do. Yeah, to, to keep like a page, an extra page in the cookbooks to have you make comments. Yeah. Great idea. That's okay. a great idea. Yeah, we have um, this. And then those, those same people might be people who would join um, in a thing like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is um, the book club cookbook and it takes um, different, I, I, I know people that um, they have book clubs, but they have eating and a little book club. <laughs> and so uh, if they like to um, pick a book that, um, you know, try fried green tomatoes, you know, you would do something with fried green tomatoes, but uh, that's always fun to do uh, is to tie food with book clubs. So yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, anything else there was someone, yes? Yes. yes. Um, so kind of tying in um, what Mary Jo said and um, what the, um, Jess is the youngest person in our group. So this will be a question for her, I guess. For instance, I have favorite recipes downstairs in the school and I have a three ring binder for bread, a three ring binder for desserts. And so I print them off and put them in plastic sleeves. Now, my daughter-in-law has, you know, she's 38 and she has started um, doing that because she finds instead of putting her computer on the counter, um, you know, with children or food or all of that, that that's what she started doing. So Jess, how would that fit into um, your cookbooks, let's say? Yeah, I think. Or, um... or Janine, I don't know. But yeah, you're the, you, you're the youth. Yeah, I mean, I I think that. So I feel like that there are a couple of purposes. So like that is like the tried and true like best recipes like you know and but then you have your cookbook for inspiration. Do you know what right. I mean? So I yeah. feel like the two can definitely plus, um, Mary Jo's idea of like clipping things out because I have you know four different magazines that I subscribe to and it's. Then I've got like, you know, a giant stack of them. So I feel like that's a really good way to kind of blend everything together and take the things that, and even like that, you know, tattered piece of paper that my mom's, you know, given me, like if I had something to put it into, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is a great idea. Yeah. But because I mean, you can get your iPad. I mean, you can take your iPad out, but I just, again, it's just having that cookbook there that you don't have to worry about you know splashing things all over and you know and then I, don't, I don't know I guess it's just something I mean maybe I'm different than other people my age but I really like that tactile recipe yeah yeah awesome <laughs> I like I like saving the pictures can you hear me mm -hmm. yeah I like saving the pictures and you can still buy these these are um books that are like the photo album type thing mm -hmm. with the sticky pages if you can do that I mean these are great you know so I keep a stack of these and it helps me when I clip them it helps me to keep them organized and yeah when I'm sitting and planning you know what I'm going to make for the holidays while I'm watching tv I can pull one of these out and flip through them and go back and find my favorite recipes so it's just a haphazard way of organizing them and well, I did want to mention one more thing. Of course, you know, I've been to Poland and ever since I've been obsessed with how good the food is to Poland. So if you have not caught that yet, I definitely uh, would, you know, recommend that you find that. It's coming on Saturday afternoons and um, it's, she's going all throughout Poland and uh, tasting you know different you know uh, restaurants and then she features some recipes and i really want to go back now <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job 
Well, and then the last thing I'll say about like an actual cookbook is I've found myself so many pop-ups online that you're, or like, you know, you find a recipe, but it's got a blog post that's like two pages long and, you know, I mean, which are kind of entertaining to read sometimes, but you don't have to worry about pop-ups, you know, and long narratives. You can just get the recipe that you want. Well, and I, what I'm noticing a lot of, and I sit there and stare at them, is these little video clips, and it speeds up, and, and I sit there, and I watch them, and then I look for the recipe, because I'm like, well, that's really easy, and that looks really good. Well, and hey, we've got a copier here, so if you find a recipe that you really like, you can copy it out of the cookbook, and then yeah. you print it, and then you've got it right there, so. Yeah. We have a lot of patrons that do that. Uh, we have one patron and she, she comes in with cookbooks all the time. The pages, you know, all, uh, okay. she has um, bookmarks on all the pages and she takes um, copies of it. Yeah, that's that's a great way of doing it. Yeah. I might as well share my latest obsession. <laughs> and uh, while you're scrolling through Facebook and you really do see a lot of recipes on Facebook. Yeah. And yeah, it's frustrating to find that recipe when you click through it. But um, you can sit there on your iPhone and you can magically send them to your printer. So now, mm. of course, now that's my newest way of collecting recipes. More recipes than I'll ever make in a lifetime, but it's <laughs> at least you get yeah, them off I know. your screen. And I, I still like things in print. <laughs> the that's why it was so nice to be in that club uh, there that you have to make something once a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and joining us to talk about recipes. And Jess and I will get all the um, copies of the, the recipes that we've shared today, and we'll get them onto the website. And this will um, be on a YouTube station at the Door County Library, um, and it'll be up on Facebook for a while. So what, what we have found is that we have quite a few people that will watch after the fact. So um, I think you'll be surprised, Jess, but our Day of the Dead had 2,000 views. Wow. <laughs> so um, our, uh, we're just so excited that our um, Zoom, our virtual programming has taken off so well here. But thank you for being a part of it today. Um, it's been fun seeing Janice and Mary Jo. It, seeing you and Dawn, we don't see you, but I hope you learned something from today too. So um, thanks again for coming and, and two weeks we're going to visit Main Street Market and Karen is going to give us some tips for uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving. So thanks again, everyone for coming and we will see you all hopefully soon. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you.